So, uh, the magnetic um, field in the, on the Earth is... Um, actually, I'm going to go to another map here. And just be patient. This is what I did. And I'll explain everything. Hopefully, you're going to be able to see that. I want to just double check. All right. So, basically, on this one... Um, and I'll put a light on so you can see. Just bear with me. Hopefully you can see that. I'm sure that's much better. And, yes. So, basically, the sun's magnetic field operates differently than ours. And actually, it works as a turbine. So, here we are on the sun, but their energy operates on a totally different principle than our magnetic field. Uh, so, with that... We uh, have a different um, potential of getting what I call the CME waves. And I'm going to explain all of what I've done and what I created there. And uh, what the, the weather forecasters here are wor wor worrying about is how the potential of a solar flare um, also could be a CME, could affect our power grids. Okay? So... Um, we're going into that information. Uh, let me just cover before I go into the map, and please don't obsess about that at the moment because I'm going to explain everything. I'm um, talking about sunspots, and here is the sunspot here. We're looking at, again, these are sunspots. And uh, basically, now very basically, because I'm not a scientist, I'm just um, telling you what I learned on through NOVA here. But basically, the... Um, surface of the sun, why it's dark is because there's hardly, um, the energy is actually lighter there. So there's less um, actually ejection. Can you see these? These are all spikes and it's moving um, literally all the time. All of those waves are moving. Um, um, they're called granular movements and it's moving all the time but all these little spots here which actually had been very, very uh, light. And I did, by the way, predict um, in 2009 about a sunspot, which had, had been very rare. They, ha they were actually, scientists at that time, were really um, worrying that they hadn't seen too many sunspots or solar flares, and they were wondering why. And I did predict correctly, and that's in the... Oh, well, that was brilliant. Uh, I'm not going to stop the video, uh, sorry about that, is um, that I had predicted um, in October that there would be a sunspot that would be visible and it did come true. So you can check that out on a previous video, an older one on predictions. So anyway, back to the sunspots. So now what they're predicting is that they're using the sunspots as an indicator of solar flares to come. And they have found out that there could be a relation or some kind of relation to where the solar spots are actually the cooler spots. In other words, it's cooler here than here, which is all um, at incredibly high degrees, thousands of degrees on the surface. But these are actually cooling spots. But they found that they cool, um, with the um, actual generation of, or seeing sight of as sunspots within that time, a certain time period, they're seeing solar flares actually uh, be created and CMEs because of that. And they really feel that the um, it's also where they call it, um, let's see, it's called the, um, they feel that it goes in an 11 year cycle, all right? And they feel that they, there is a time where it's waning and waxing, okay? They, um, at the moment, they feel that they were still in a coming into the, actually, the end of or have already surpassed the waning period. And we're coming into a waxing time of reverse poles. And when um, the waning is when a um, magnetic, uh, the magnetic poles of the sun actually reverse, and that's when they call it solar minimum time period, when there's less sunspots. A solar maximum period is when it starts up again and the activity of the magnetic poles start actually not going up north to south, it actually moves horizontally. So not like us, north to south, and it's more or less, uh, even though we're in a polar shift, 
um, oops. Um, this is more to do with that it goes starts straight north to south and then it starts getting into a, a plaited and a rope kind of a configuration and then eventually goes into a lateral not um, down but literally lateral a horizontal sorry lateral to raw horizontal uh, and that's why um, it crosses and these are cycles that they've noticed within 11 years so we they do believe that we are in a solar maximum stage at the moment so where activity is going to be more pronounced in the magnetic poles so um at least that's what the um, scientists believe and it um if this happens uh with a solar flare they would call that if there is an ejection of uh, actual activity in a cme which is again um, a flare that actually connects and cuts off and actually shoots out and if it actually comes into the zone towards earth um, on a parallel um, and it actually hits at the right angle we will be hit all right but i don't see that quite frankly not yet it has been reported in the 1800s and in 2000 i think there was um, an episode where it was and uh, in the yeah, 1800s as well so anyway basically um that was actually it missed and it didn't really it wasn't dead one to one it was off so therefore it was um, magnet the magnetization to the earth was much less okay and um, at that time they only saw uh, solar a lot of auroras all right and that was an indication of um, that CME hitting or a solar flare so um, with all of that, hopefully you're following and you don't find this is um, incredibly boring, but you can always skip to the prediction part, which we're coming into now. Um, so I just want to let you know what the real um, the background was for the sun. And I do believe in educating and in all my classes I try and teach as much information. And this is really uh, solar physics. And I thought, well, why not? We'll go into that. So here we are now. Oops, bouncing around as usual. Okay, so here we are. And this is what I drew when I started talking about the predictions. Okay, so let me just go over a few things here. Here is the Earth. Here we are. And what I'm seeing is when the moon is here at the back and the sun is there. So it's not completing a cycle, but anyway, mostly the moon will be here in that position, mostly, not all the time. This red line is the Earth's magnetic field. Okay, it's a bit smaller in that end. And what I did, obviously this is the sun, and what I'm seeing is there is going to be, I'm gonna address the first prediction, and that is where around about late August and you'll see um, more sunspots uh, building but not prominently but more sunspots building and in this area here where uh, around about mid August to well mid to late August I would say you're going to see actually um, three flares it could be four but it's going to be very small the fourth but the first one being about that size from the earth and at that position not here but at that position um, and hitting like that. They will not become CMEs where it actually ejects and comes out and leaves the sun, the solar energy. And this I'm seeing as a solar flare, three major solar flares, the third one being the largest one, okay? And that, uh, the yellow is where I see the direction of the influence of how it's going to be affected. So I do feel very, very slightly that the auroras will be seen around about that time. So it'll be late August, around about September. But again, the flares won't be one after the other. They could be having um, a week of to three days in between each one of those. So you will see around about that period into September where those three solar flares will be affected. So in that angle that I'm seeing, and that's quite large, but it really won't be affecting us um, as that is the angle I'm seeing the affected zone. All right. Um, now, I do see that a very large um, 
yeah, a very large sunspot surrounded about by about half a dozen or so sunspots. Remember, a large sunspot um, and then a kind of not hickledy pickledy, but it's all around there, around the main sunspot that will be um, sunspots will be actually noticed by about mid to late September. Soon after this, it's towards the end of it, the tail end of that flare, and you'll see that there's more solar flares coming in. But the sunspots are going to be quite prominent at that time in September, um, and soon after that, there will be a solar flare which. I feel that it will be here, this one. So that one, as you can see, is, has a good potential of actually in, uh, hitting the Earth. And I'm seeing it here, where, down about here, towards the Earth. So it's really more or less broad spectrum hitting Earth. But I don't feel it's one-on-one, -on -one, which is what they're afraid of. Remember, if it's equivalent to this, the, um, the North and South Poles and the, the North and South are equal, that's when we're going to get hit with a energy burst that will actually decimate the any electricals. But I'm seeing it more on not this angle, but more on this angle. So obviously it's off, so auroras are highly likely and there could be some outages. And I do see it, it's more to do with um, the polars are being, and this section here being maybe, um, not Canada, but, uh, you know, up north a bit more, Alaska, stuff like that, where it's really far north that you'll be seeing it, but far more auroras that you'll be seeing and noticing. All right? Nothing serious as so far. Now, the other one that I'm seeing is um, here, which is the coronal mass ejection, the CME, which will be a flare, and it'll be from here, and again, it completely misses the Earth. It's not what I'm, you know, seeing, but it's coming this way, um, outwards, and that would be an ejection. And it comes in seven waves. They don't necessarily just come in one group. What I'm seeing, and the last one they saw in 2000 was three waves, but I'm seeing about seven waves. Uh, but they're all gradually, kind of, um, from uh, one not so large to the big one to. Uh, two or three the same size-ish, getting smaller, to smaller, tiny ones that you can't even see. So that actually solar activity would be there. So that would be that CME this way. All right. Um, now, I'm not going to put it in here because this is really about 2012. But um, what they're predicting uh, that the, again, we talked about this, is the geomagnetic storms increasing and also that the waxing, the solar max minimum phase will be in 2013. Not all of them, some of them are saying scientists. And I see again mid to late August next year is when we have to have, uh, we should be concerned about it. And hopefully we will be able to um, get appliances to um, protect ourselves on that one for a solar storm. But again, I don't feel it's going to be a direct hit, but it would be close enough that it will get us concerned. This is something that could be inevitable, but we are in a upswing of activity on the sun. So we're going to see far more um, uh, sunspots and solar flares. But these are ones that I'm seeing at the moment only. And I, you know, I really would like your um, input on it. Uh, sorry if I've confused you or uh, hopefully I've not misled you. But again, I always say, and in my classes and in the book, you'll see that I say, go check on your own um, what you um, believe in and uh, go do the research. But there is a great one from Nova um, that they did a great video on it, a documentary. And uh, that's how I got my information and just learning as much as I could uh, to impart this information on the predictions. So hopefully this one will be of interest to a few. Let me know. And uh, please don't start panicking. It is nothing to panic about. That's why I decided to put it this way, that you are not going to see or uh, really feel it. The only ones here are these ones here, which is going to be on an angle, and it will not be a direct hit. Uh, and the only other CME that I see is coming this way. And that's about it. I hope.